to all y'all that say he don't like black people, that is Ice Cube's platinum plan that he tried to get introduced the first time. That platinum plan, that's Ice Cube's platinum plan for black America that he was trying to push the first time. Ice Cube's request was called the Platinum Plan, and it was specifically for black people. And it didn't take anything away from any other Americans either. So I don't know. This could be good for black people now. And like the man said, take it for what it's worth. Democrats are now fighting back against Trump's administration by making a secret shadow cabinet to counter everything Trump does. If Trump attempts to weaponize the justice system against his political opponents with Matt Gates at the helm, we can see incoming Senator Adam Schiff as our shadow attorney general, arguing against replacing our independent prosecutors with Trump loyalists. If Trump seeks to eliminate the Department of Education, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes, a former teacher of the year, could step up as shadow education secretary to loudly defend public education in the United States. Three MAGA attacks on our government. It's also about making clear what we stand for, not just what we're against. Now, I'm not even sure how something like this would even be allowed. Somebody might have to explain in the comments because I think this is literally not allowed at all. As time keeps going, we're seeing different tactics that the left is doing to counter anything Trump does. We even seen governors in blue states are saying that they're not gonna deport any citizen and won't allow Trump to deport any citizen. I wanna hear your thoughts down below. What do you think about all this? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Well, you know what? It's crazy because they always say that Trump is going to weaponize his team, right, against us. When they say us, they try to include the Americans in there. But the truth of the matter is, he's not trying to weaponize them against us, the people. It's against them. And that's what they're worried about. But what they do is they say us as American people so they can fear monger and, and make us jump on their side. But see, a lot of us that know already know what Trump is trying to do. He understood that the first time he got in office, he didn't have enough people on his side to make the things happen that he wanted to happen. And he knows that before he gets in there, he needs to have everybody set up and on his side before he's inaugurated in order to make things happen. All right, Kat, you are America's favorite prophet and my personal North Star. You said Thank a lot you. of truths are going to be popping off in 2024. Yes. And you were right about a lot of those. Do we have one more conspiracy pop out before the end of the year? Bless us. None of them were conspiracies, which is Sorry. why they all happened. Wrong and, word. Uh, <laughs> Another prophecy. I believe uh, we're entering the golden age, I believe. Uh, okay. So, you know. That's good for us, right? And that's good? Is that good? Magnificent. I'm saying it is what it is. Okay. Right after the age of truth, the revealing is the scab being pulled off, and then uh, the healing can begin. Let the healing begin. Kat, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank God you bless for you. Thank you, bro. We appreciate Truly it. Truly a fan. I love you. But yeah, I, I believe that too. I believe that we in the golden era because of, but but people don't understand what what has to happen before we can actually live in the golden era. Things have to be revealed and things have to happen. Some things you may, may or may not agree with, but it, it's got to happen before we can live in the golden era. Keith Lee unknowingly just ate sushi that clearly had a live worm wiggling around in it on camera in one of his most recent food review videos. In the video, Keith is reviewing a sushi buffet in Seattle called Fob Sushi Bar. The video starts like normal with Keith Lee reviewing the different types of sushi that he purchased. But then towards the end of the video, he picks up a piece of sashimi and holds it in front of the camera as he talks. But while he does, you can see a small worm begin to flicker out of the bottom of the fish. Keith did not Ew. seem to notice the worm at all and ate the raw piece of fish. Keith then gave it a score of 8.5. That is the piece of sushi that he gave the highest score to at this restaurant. And he even said that he would come back specifically for that bite that had contained the parasite. But this as a sashimi is high. 8.5 out of 10, and especially for oh, the price. Wow. I would come oh. just for that bite. So this video was posted by Keith five days ago, but the internet just began pointing out the worm today. Keith Lee has not responded at this time. Oh my God, man, what the? This is exactly why I don't eat seafood. This is exactly why I don't eat seafood, bro. I don't. My wife, she eats sushi, but she eats it fried. So whatever worms were in it, probably cooked too. But yes, I 
yeah, nah, man. That they they can have it. Tennessee law enforcement warning that the violent Venezuelan gang Trinidad Agua is now operating in every major city in the state. Tennessee Bureau of Investigation Director David Rausch has been warning local leaders about the growing threat and joins us now. Uh, sir, thanks so much for joining the program. Thank you, Lawrence. So uh, what's the big issue as it relates to your law enforcement uh, capabilities? Is is the, the current federal, uh, you know, detainers and all that preventing you from doing your job? Give us the scope. No, I, I don't think it's any of that. I think what we have is, unfortunately, uh, because of the porous border, uh, this gang has exploited it, and they are uh, actively working uh, throughout our country. And we know, uh, because of our investigations, they are actively working in Tennessee. Uh, they are in our four major cities, uh, Nashville, Memphis, Knoxville, and Chattanooga, and they are uh, running human trafficking operations right now. We, we first noticed them about two years ago during a, a trafficking operation in Middle Tennessee. And we thought after we had captured a few of them, we knew some of them had fled. We thought that they would move out of Tennessee, but they have moved back. And we are aware now, after some meetings this past uh, month, we're aware that they are uh, moving into different operations. They, they go from human trafficking to organized retail crime theft. And then they move into the drug trade, taking on the cartels in a very violent, bloody uh, battles that they've had. Uh, and they also have zero respect for uh, policing. Uh, they have attacked law enforcement officers throughout our nation. So, sir, what do you charge them with? You, you see that these folks may be allegedly a part of Trinidad de Agua. If, they, if you haven't witnessed them committing a crime, got any evidence of a crime, right now, because of the current administration, you can't turn them over the ice to be de deported. What do you do? Yeah, so that, that's a challenge. We, we do, uh, if we come upon them and they have a detainer on them, then we can take them into custody. Right. Uh, but other than that, then all we can do is monitor and, uh, and assure that they aren't violating the law. But that is a challenge. That's a game of cat and mouse, right? Very much so. Very much so. We, we do that, uh, unfortunately, too frequently. And, uh, and with these uh, very violent, violent criminals, uh, it, it is, uh, it's a dangerous game. I'm hoping with the new administration, as a matter of fact, I know things are going to change. Sir, thank you so much for all that you do. You know, it's crazy because I haven't seen any cases of those Venezuelan gangs. I told you I've seen a few ride around uh, in groups, but, you know, we in Memphis. And uh, they can try it if they want. I don't think they're going to be too successful. But if you know, you know. Starting the process of terminating the diversity lottery program i'm going to ask congress to immediately initiate work to get rid of this program diversity and diversity lottery diversity lottery sounds nice it's not nice it's not good it's not good it hasn't been good we've been against it so we want to immediately work with congress on the diversity lottery program on terminating it, getting rid of it. We want a merit-based program where people come into our country based on merit. And we want to get rid of chain migration. And for context, if those, for those who don't know, the diversity lottery program was a program where migrants can sign up for, for here in the US. And if you get selected, you can get granted you know, citizenship. You get a green card, you get a visa for free. Yeah, uh, I just recently found out about this program. I don't think we need that, man. Because here go my thing, right? Why would they go so hard to depopulate and then turn around, populate it with people not even from this country? I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. I could think of one reason it might be is that there are more people turning into entrepreneurs now than there ever has been in the United States in history. And it's causing their businesses to flop. They have no more workers, so they're bringing all these immigrants over to work for these companies. That's my idea. He is what every undocumented immigrant in this country fears the most. And Donald Trump just picked him as the next border czar. And although it is true that he plans to do mass deportations, 
of anyone that already has orders of deportation, anyone that failed to appear in front of an immigration judge, anyone that has committed a crime here in the United States, or anyone that has crossed the border more than once, meaning they were deported back to their country and now they're back in the United States. Tom Holman says that the very first group that are going home the 1.6 undocumented criminals that are here in the United States. But there's also a lot of speculation that Tom Holman will be deporting U.S. citizens. That's simply not true. He says that that's a rumor that someone got started, but his priorities are those groups that I just mentioned. So how is Trump planning to pay for all of these mass deportations, you may ask? It's called self-deportation. That's because of the 11 million people that are undocumented right now in the United States. Most of them pay taxes. And the United States knows exactly where they are. And they're gonna start receiving letters from ICE, giving them an X amount of time to pick up and go. And what people are not gonna wanna do is suddenly being picked up by ICE while they're at work. Because it gives you no time to go to the bank. It gives you no time to sell your house, your vehicle, they put you in a holding cell and within 24 hours, you're back in your country. People are just gonna choose self-deportation, especially if they're giving them 90 days to leave the country. They're gonna want to put their affairs in order, sell a house, pack the vehicle, take their belongings. So in the next four years, we're gonna see a lot of people who are just gonna pick up their things and leave the country all on their own. Theory, theory. Like, I don't know about nobody else. I'm going to drop a PSA. Y'all hear that new platinum plan Donald Trump just uh just brought in? To all y'all that say he don't like black people, that is Ice Cube's platinum plan that he tried to get introduced the first time. That platinum plan, that's Ice Cube's platinum plan for black America that he was trying to push the first time. Take it for what it's worth. Take it for what it's worth. Hey. If you know, you know. If you don't know, knowing is half the battle. I say. I got a theory. I'm always get to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look more into that. But Ice Cube's request was called the Platinum Plan, and it was specifically for Black people, and it didn't take anything away from any other Americans either. So I don't know. This could be good for Black people now. And like the man said, take it for what it's worth. Why is Joe so chipper, and why is Donny Boy on his best behavior? Look at that smile. Look at the smile on that man. He's elated. This is the man who would not even shake his hand at the debates, wouldn't even acknowledge him at the 9-11 memorial event. What is he so chipper about? I have never seen this man this happy. Not while double fisting ice cream. I've rarely seen anybody this happy. Also to point out, Obama, not chipper. Not once was he chipper. Fully bummed the whole time. You gotta understand this too. Man, I'm literally sitting here crying because <clears throat> I get it. I'm outside of the church house right now waiting on somebody and it got me thinking, you know, they tried really hard in Pennsylvania Kamala Harris got all these celebrities to come to Pennsylvania and they went and held these rallies in Pennsylvania and you heard Trump say Trump said if we win Pennsylvania we win the whole thing and the Democratic Party was targeting voting blocks the gays the blacks the Latinos the white man the women the, uh, all all the voting blocks they were attacking they had Obama come out and they were going into Pittsburgh and they were going into Philadelphia and they were pounding, pounding, Philly, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, we need Pennsylvania. But then God showed up. See, out of all the voting blocks that they were looking at and counting, they forgot one voting block. They thought that they had 
you know, all the American people sewed up, but they forgot a group of Americans that has long been forgotten, the Amish. The Amish has never voted in any campaign ever. And you would think for the first time for them as a community to vote, it'd be, you know, some would trickle in because others just are totally against government. They don't want to participate in it. So they would slowly trickle in. No, that's not what happened. They showed up in droves. It looked like a battalion of Amish people, horse and buggy with Trump flags flying. I wanted to cry when I seen them buggies coming down that road with the Trump flags on it. Buggy after buggy after buggy after buggy. Literally, those people were literally coming to save America. That's a voting block that the mainstream media and the Democrat Party forgot, totally forgot about. And you, they, they can't go after them because they don't watch TV. They don't look at the news. They're not brainwashed by the propaganda. Mm. Why don't you look at a group of people that hasn't even seen CNN and then show them, ask them, and listen? Because they haven't been brainwashed by either side. They haven't ta partaken in the propaganda of the left or the right. And when they get a chance to vote, clearly off their conscience, they vote for Trump. If you cannot see that Trump is anointed and this is the direct hand of God, you better fall on your knees the night before you go to bed and ask God to return the, return the joy of your salvation and you don't lose that first love. The Amish are the people who shifted this election. Period. Point blank period. It wasn't blacks. It was, it was whites for sure, but it was mostly the Amish. If the Amish had never got out and voted, I don't know what his election was. But we got to salute the Amish for a show. I'm Admiral Rachel Levine, the Assistant Secretary for Health. I stand with the LGBTQI plus community as a proud. And this is a major problem, but I'm glad it's getting replaced. Transgender woman. And that, my friends, is what health looks like. 70-something-year-old man built like he's about 30 or 40. Come on, man. I appreciate that people are having a hard time. Me, too. Yeah. I work for a living. If I had all the money in the world, I would not be here. Okay? <laughs> so I'm a working person. Working person? This is the most out-of-touch thing I've ever heard a celebrity say. We got to run some numbers and put this into perspective. The median household income in America is $80,000. And after taxes, it's... And let me get that. Let me get that understood. Because people think that when it says the median house household income is $80,000, that means per person. No, that's all together. That's all together. Not just one person. I just had to say that. $66,000, and this is before 401k contributions and health insurance. You have been famous for 40 years and have a net worth of $60 million. And on top of that, you make $8 million a year. And even though you're paying an insane amount of taxes, you're still taking home $3.8 million a year. That is $73,000 a week take home pay. You, Whoopi Goldberg, by yourself, make more money per week than the average American family makes a year. And you're going to sit here and say that you relate to the struggle of the American people. Do you realize that people have not recovered financially since the pandemic? I personally think they should cancel the view because that is a part of the propaganda that, that steers people uh, wrong. And mostly women watch that show and they get these ideas that these people are telling the truth instead of doing the research themselves. And then it causes a rift in families because you have a husband going against wife and a wife going against husband, trying to get the wife to understand that what they're saying on The View isn't true. So shows like that need to be canceled. And there's a lot more that need to be canceled, but that one for sure needs to be canceled, for sure. All right, President Trump's selection of Pete Hegseth to be Secretary of Defense has been uh, quite controversial, but uh, you can understand why after watching this based clip of him taking on the deep state. Take a look. Well, first of all, you got to fire um, 
you know, you got to fire the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and you got to fire this. I mean, obviously, you're going to bring in a new Secretary of Defense, but any general that was involved, general, admiral, whatever that was involved in any of the DEI woke shit, it's got to go. Uh, either you're in for war fighting, that, and that's it, and that's the only litmus test we care about. Uh, you got to get DEI and CRT out of military academies, so you're not training young officers to be baptized in this type of thinking. There's an ethos change. I mean, there's a reason we're not, people don't want to serve, because they don't trust that th their senior leaders are going to have their best interest in mind in combat. For all of the white women, the Becca Lees, and the Bentleys, and Emily's that voted for Trump, this is what I got to say to you. Whenever your little... Just so y'all know, I do not back this woman because she sounds silly as hell. ...comes home full of Tyreekas' come shop. that she's going to get. She's going to be forced to have a baby and disgrace the whole family. <laughs> Go ahead, Tyrone. Put it in her. Do you, do you Hear me out. Hear me out. This is actually really good. The more videos that they are making means the more people are seeing who these people truly are. This is now becoming educational. It's definitely educational because that was narcissistic as hell. And it's sad that it's the majority of people that look like me and that's my color. Because only 23% of us don't think like this, according to the voting polls. Only 23% of us. 12 to 23%. Uh, two questions. First, you, you've predicted that mass deportations won't happen in New York City. You said, I'm sorry. You have predicted that mass deportations won't happen in New York City. I predicted that? Yes, you've said that they won't happen here. Okay, I don't know about predicted, pre predicted but go ahead. Well, do you think that they will happen here? They're, we're going to do everything possible to make sure that people are treated in the dignity and humane way that we've done for these last few years. Okay, so then my question is, how can migrant New Yorkers be sure that they won't happen here, given that ICE can make arrests in New York City without police cooperation? And then the second question is, you know, why should New Yorkers, including migrant New Yorkers, trust that you will advocate for them with the new Trump administration, given that you have a personal stake in, in you know, winning the president's favor? Okay, a couple of things. Do you think every New Yorker believes there should not or should be mass deport deportation? Do you believe every New Yorker believes that? No, but you have said you don't think there should yeah, be. Yeah, but, but, but you said, how can I advocate for New Yorkers? So I should only advocate for one type of New Yorker or all New Yorkers? Well, that's tough. I don't think you can advocate for all New Yorkers. Oh, That's really? Okay, so which New Yorker I shouldn't advocate for? The ones that agree with you or disagree with you? Well, if you believe there should be no mass deportations, how can people believe that you will advocate for that with, with the Trump, incoming Trump administration? You, but you, you set up a question. This is very interesting, the question you set up. So there's certain New Yorkers I shouldn't advocate for? I'm not sure that was my question. Uh, my question was, why should New Yorkers trust that you will advocate for them with the administration? Let's go back again. There's some New Yorkers, there are people who stop me on the street and says, I voted for, I voted for the president. I have two questions. Man, you got to watch these reporters, man, because they, they are so good at their jobs to where they can set up questions that will cause you to say something that you literally did not mean to say. Not in this situation. I feel like he handled that very well, but they will. To the unprofessional person getting asked the question, they could slip up. And that's why we as a people have to pay attention to the questions that these reporters ask. We have to do more, y'all. Don't let just because Trump got in the office, that means we can slack and relax. No, we got to make sure that the Republic is being supported and make sure it doesn't go underwater by doing our due diligence as American people. For context, these pictures are saying that every House Democrat voted no on the Parent Bill of Rights. And on the second picture, this is what the Parent Bill of Rights contained. And all of the, the Democrats voted against it. Now, I'm going to play it. You can pause it and y'all can read it. And then y'all tell me, why would they do that?
it's tutorial time. So today, it's time to do a YouTube tutorial. A perfect tutorial to do today. What's it gonna be? Today's tutorial, oh, how to, whoa. Okay, this tutorial. Uh, this is the tutorial now. This is a can. This is my my YouTube. This is my YouTube account. Alan tutorial and Alan tutorial shows people how to how to do how to um how to weatherize a hole. So first thing step. In the tutorials, take a weather, a, can, a weatherized can, and this is a hole. Weatherize. Oh, I forgot. First thing you need is a kind of cloth. Yeah, I don't know if that's a reptilian, but them shows some ugly feet. I tell you that. Trump isn't even a, even in office yet. He had a phone call with Mayor a Eric Adams today, and the checks have stopped. Watch this clip. No longer issue vouchers to migrants to pay for food, ending a controversial program that had repeatedly come under attack by conservatives and The checks have stopped. <laughs> you are no longer getting endless money to cause inflation, and you are no longer giving money to non-Americans. It's, it's not happening. It's not happening. Trump made one phone call and let him know you can stop it now or you can stop it on January 20th, but, but it's going to stop. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a good four years, people. They are going to finally put Americans first. And, and if not, they're going to put everybody last, but they definitely ain't going to put other people in front of Americans. I tell you that. Those are facts. So he already starting to save the country some money. So it's looking good, folks, it's looking good. I know Russian language very well, and you will call me paranoid, and I understand why, but it's still, I'm like, if I wanna say Beyonce in Russian language, I will say Ruma. If I wanna say thank, I will say Roma or Romam. And the phrase, I wanna thank Beyonce to Russian translates as Ra, Ra, A, 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 Roma, Roma, Ma. And it's not a big secret, because, like, uh, I heard those lyrics before. No, it's like 12.46 a.m. I'm just, like, can't go sleep because I'm thinking about it. Maybe I'm a psycho or something. I I don't know, like, uh, maybe I'm just being paranoid. I, I don't know. Did she really say it? Was she in danger or something? I don't know, man. It's just so complicated. That all si whole situation. I can't. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. Y'all gotta do your homework. Embrace Hit different. Communities. Donald Trump. Well, it is an honor to be here, and uh, I was with Jesse last year, and we had a lot of fun, and it was a little different. Jesse started off by saying, most of the wealth in this country is in the hands of a few. And I thought to myself, is that a bad thing? That's, what's wrong with that, Jesse? But he did have an expression last year, and I loved, I was just telling Roger, he had an expression last year, the wall on wall must fall. And you haven't used it today, and I'm very disappointed in this, Jesse, because I thought it was a great expression. And I heard the expression about 14 times, and then he came to me at the end of the session, and he said, listen, I want some office space in your building on Wall Street, because the wall on wall will fall. And I said, it's okay, Jesse, I'll make a good deal with you. I'll get you some space. You'll pay about $40 a foot. And he said, no, 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 I don't want to pay 40. So how about 30? No. 
It was the cheapest deal I ever made in the history of 40 Wall Street. Is that right? <laughs> he got it for nothing. He's a very tough negotiator. We know that, right? Nah, he's a terrific guy. We love him, and I'm here for him. And the snow came, and I said, gee, nobody's going to show up, and look at this place. It's packed. Well, i just say a few words. I mean, Wall Street and New York City and this whole region is doing unbelievably well. Uh, I'm building a job on the west side, which is the largest job ever approved by the New York City Planning Commission. You see it going up along the west side highway. It's almost 10 million square feet. It's 18 buildings, and it's really going to be something. I will tell you a lot. To say that Trump is not for blacks is crazy to me, man. I don't understand this. I grew up watching Trump mingle with black people like crazy. And he was loved by everybody, even white people until he started to run. Now you got some white people on the left that don't like him at all. But it's crazy to say that though. You're telling me that a man can get pregnant? Yes, a man can get pregnant. <laughs> Y'all hear that? I just arrived. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Pushard can answer that one. She's sitting right there. Dr. Pushard. Nice. Ah, uh, what are your qualifications? You know, I have a degree. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you, you know that. You say men can get pregnant? Yes, the numbers just keep going up. Who are these niggas? <laughs> oh, I cried laughing when I <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what? Like, who, who? How are these people? How did they get degrees? We need to stay away from these niggas. <laughs> are you sure? I'm the expert here. I've never seen a pregnant man. You feel like everybody lying. Well, Senator, have you ever seen an Eskimo? I'm confused. Negro, please. What hole does the baby come out? What hole do you think they come out? Oh. Lava, lava. Mmm, Mr. Lava Lava. Mmm, she called me Mr. Bombastic. Tell me fantastic. So that's what rearing a child means? The world coming to an end. And I <laughs> what? <laughs> rearing a child? Oh my god. My room playing on my dingling. <laughs> You're telling me that a man can. You're looking at the new head of the FBI or the CIA. His name is Kosh Patel, and he's probably the most feared individual by the intel agencies out there. And that is because he is a Trump loyalist with tons of experience within the government and knows exactly how these intel agencies work. Guys, what's up? My name's Samuel Arms. I'm a political strategist. Don't forget to follow if you want to stay up to date on all of Trump's upcoming appointments. Let's go over some of Patel's agenda. He wants to declassify everything with JFK and 9-11, wants to bring out the you know what black book, which has everybody's names. Everything that happened in 2016 with Russia, and then of course in 2020 with this. You guys don't understand how motivated Kosh Patel is to literally weed through everybody in the intel agencies, find them, and prosecute them. And he was in the Justice Department as a prosecutor already, and was appointed Acting Deputy Director of National Intelligence, which is the second in command of the entire U.S. Intelligence Committee. The dude knows his stuff. This is just more evidence that Trump's appointments that are incoming are going to entirely reshape our government for decades to come. And he's doing it so fast. He's appointing people so fast that the Democrats have no time to react. That's why they try to do the secret cabinet, which is not even gonna happen, y'all. It's not gonna happen. They can do it, but it has to be voted in. It's not gonna happen. It's definitely not gonna happen, bro. The logo of CERN has caused some amount of controversy online. If turned upside down, some claim the CERN logo represents three sixes, which, as they say, is a clear sign of the biblical mark of the beast from the book of Revelation. This also resembles a hand gesture that is thought to signify the three sixes of the mark of the beast. Most times this hand gesture is shown over an individual's right eye, signifying, as some claim, the all-seeing eye of the Illuminati and Freemasonry. There are some who interpret the CERN acronym in the middle of the three sixes as representing the eye itself. Most people outside of conspiratorial research often deduce CERN's logo as representing nothing else but the design of a synchrotron particle accelerator. It's even said that this was to be the original design for the logo, but it looked too much like a black hole. Now, in my humble opinion, the symbol of the logo appears to be just a coincidence, but as it stands today, opinions are split as to whether we have a massive coincidence or a massive conspiracy. What do you think? Let us know what you think in the comments and follow for more. Well, I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave it here. I don't understand why we need a particle accelerator in the first place. But hell, do what they do. And apparently CERN isn't in America. So 
but we have particle accelerators here in America. They small. They're not as big as the one uh, big as CERN, but we do have them. But I don't understand why we need them. I mean, I guess, you know, science is needed to help people understand what's going on around us. But do we really care? I'm just saying. Not even going to stay on that too long. But I'm going to say this. We see that Trump is appointing people that are bad ass. Let's just go and get it out of the way, right? And there's always that that little saying in the back of my mind that's like, how much ass is he's actually planning on kicking? And should I be worried? I don't think I should be worried, but damn. And you just got to wonder what the effects of this ass kicking is going to be. Let's just say that he's definitely putting the American people first this time. And like old boy said, if not first, he definitely won't be putting us last, right? So we just got to stay prayed up. I told you the work is not done yet, y'all. He's in there. We got one part of it done, but we still got work to do. So we got to stay on top of our business, man. Now I could rant, but I won't. And with that being said, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description, follow all my social medias. And remember, challenge the argument and not the person.